What is a graph? This is the definition of graph that appears in most of the textbooks. Do you think that a 6th grade student can understand from this definition what a graph is? How about this? Or this? This is a graph that represents a flight network among some cities. Each vertex in this graph represents a city and each edge represents a flight between two cities. This is a mutual friendship graph. Each vertex in this graph is a person and each edge represents a friendship between two persons. Let us discuss some more examples. In graph theory, a path in a graph is a sequence of vertices such that from each of its vertices there is an edge to the next vertex in the sequence. An Eulerian trail is a trail in a graph which visits every edge exactly once. Difficult? Let us solve a different problem that is the same as finding an Eulerian trail. Many of you might have played this game before where you have to connect the dots in the right figure without lifting the pencil and overwriting an edge so as to form the figure on the left. Easy? Finding an Eulerian path is the same as this. Finding shortest path in a graph and graph coloring are some more examples which can be more fun than problems. A typical strategy of teaching mathematics is as follows. The teacher teaches notation and formulas. The students then solve word problems. The problem with the strategy is that it is very much top down. It is just like knowledge is poured down to the students. Students are unable to link learned concepts with real world problems and hence the learning is not meaningful. We present a different approach that we name do not teach graph theory. We turn the typical approach upside down. We present to students some real world problems, maybe the games they have already been playing. We then help them discover that the concepts they are using are in fact concepts of graph theory. The technique we propose is really challenging. We are following an exemplar based learning model, although it is very natural, but we have to face generalization problems. The basic aim of our study is to learn whether students of grade 5 and 6 are able to understand the concepts of graph theory and use these concepts in problem solving. As discussed above, we predict that notation is the main hurdle in understanding graph theory and that use of visual representation and interesting examples should improve learning the concepts of graph theory. To test our hypothesis, we conducted some experiments at a local school. We picked a random sample of 12 students, 6 from grade 5 and 6 from grade 6, and asked them to represent some cities and flights between them in a diagram. Everyone came up with his representation. The representations were quite interesting. The students showed a tendency to use factual information like city size, location, landmarks, airports, planes, and directions in their representations. For example, when asked to represent roads, some students drew one-way roads while others drew two-way roads. In this figure, Lahore is represented as a city with rivers. This is a flight map drawn by one student. And this is a representation of roads. Here the roads are represented as two-way roads. Students showed understanding of directed and undirected edges. The students were then introduced to the concept of degree of a vertex. All students were able to find degrees of vertices as well as to discover the relationship between sum of degrees and edges, but they required a hint to understand why that relationship holds. These are the hints provided to the students. When finding degree, what are you counting? How many times does each road get counted? We then presented the students with these two equal graphs and we asked them if they were equal. Although some students got confused and tried to use concept of degree as it was discussed right before this, all of them understood the necessary and sufficient conditions for equality after being introduced to the questions like, if I rename a city, will the graphs remain equal? If I add or remove a road, will the graphs remain equal? If I change the road endpoints, will the graph remain equal? Students also had a problem with keeping the record of which vertex or edge in graph 1 matches to which vertex or edge in graph 2. So they were asked to use edge labeling like this and this. Students already understood the concept of adjacency and had no problems going back and forth between graphs and adjacency matrices. It is interesting to note that the students do not necessarily fill the adjacency matrix in order.
The students were then presented with the shortest path problem in the form of a story. Given this graph, the students were asked to plan a shortest path trip between two cities O and T. Students were walked through an example of finding shortest path through Dijkstra's algorithm in a story mode. After that, they successfully applied the algorithm on a similar but different problem, which is this. From the experiments, we can see that with the removal of notation, the graph theory content becomes easy to comprehend and apply. Our experiments show a successful transfer of some graph theory intuitions which lay down a framework for learning generalized concepts of graph theory.